Stars can come in all sorts of different sizes, with our Sun being at the smaller end of the average main sequence star. However, there are significantly more massive stars out there, and some of these have some really interesting properties and lives. There are several different ways of measuring stars, like how much light they give off, what volume they occupy, but the key to knowing what is likely to happen to a star during its life is how massive it is. Basically, the number of protons, neutrons, and a few other bits and pieces go to make up the whole of the star. And it's difficult to talk about the weight of a star. It depends upon gravity. The more massive the star is, the greater the gravitational force it produces. For convenience sake, astronomers tend to use the mass of our sun as a measuring stick. So the sun has a mass of one solar mass. The larger or massive stars that I'm going to talk about generally have between 10 and 30 times the mass of our sun, so have a size of 10 to 30 solar masses. A key to nuclear fusion inside stars is governed by the pressure, which in turn is governed by the mass of the star. The more massive the star, the greater the gravitational force, the more elements in the heart of the star that are squeezed together. The more of this squeezing that occurs, the faster the rate of nuclear fusion. It means that even if a more massive star has many times the mass of our sun, with far more hydrogen than our sun does, it burns through it at a far greater rate. These stars are generally very hot at the start of their lives, but they don't last very long. And the heat generated by the process of nuclear fusion works to balance out the inwards pull of gravity created by the star. So the larger the mass of the star, the more gravity pulls everything closer together. The closer things are together, the faster nuclear fusion happens. The faster nuclear fusion happens, the hotter the star gets, and the more, more the faster the atoms of the star are moving, and the more expands. In this way, initial stages of the star for nuclear fusion don't collapse or burst apart, but remains relatively stable. It also means that any hydrogen that's the heart of the star is more likely to fuse into he helium than hydrogen on the outer edge of the star. So in a way, a star burns fuel from the inside outwards. As I said earlier, these massive stars burn through the hydrogen fairly quickly. So that after a few million years, most of the core of the star is now helium rather than hydrogen. Though it's significant amounts of hydrogen can still happen around the edge of the star. The gravitational forces still are great enough to fuse these helium atoms to then produce carbon and oxygen for about half a million years. The reason this time scale is decreasing is that as heavier elements are produced, the amount of energy released is less. The gravitational forces are winning the expansive heat forces and crushing the atoms closer together, resulting up in a speeding up of the reaction. After this rate, speeds up even more, with the carbon being turned to oxygen and neon in about a thousand years. And then, in about just one year, the remaining neon and oxygen are converted into silicon, argon and sulphur. And finally, the silicon is converted into iron in about a single day. The problem with the creation of iron by fusion is that rather than producing energy, it actually needs energy for the fusion to take place. So the inner core of the star is now rapidly cooling. At the same stage, earlier reactions are taking place in the outer parts of the star. What happens next in the life of a large star are the most dramatic events in our universe. I'll try to cover it in a little more detail in the next video.